Honorable Superior Court for the Judicial District, Antonio Milford, Milford for the transaction of criminal business is now open in session in this place. All persons having cause, action pending, summoned, prompt to appear here and shall take the notes thereof and give their attention according to the law. Now, will Judge H. Gordon Hall presiding. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Um, so as I understand it, uh, this morning we're going to have, uh, one witness from the defense. Yes, Your Honor. And, uh, and that witness is, you're ready to go with that witness when we bring the jury out? Correct. Okay. And then we have some other matters we'll take up after your witness. Yes, Your Honor. And just for the record, I'm just going to approach the clerk. I'm filing two documents that I've already shared with uh, Attorney Devlin and the court, one relating to defendant's request to charge, and then one regarding an objection to something we're going to argue later in the morning. Okay, that'd be fine. Anything from the state before we bring the jury? No, Thank you. Okay, could we bring the jury, please? State will stipulate to the jury, Your Honor. Defense will stipulate as well. Thank you both. Uh, defense, you want to call your first witness, Mr. Riccio? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Defense calls Trooper First Class Craig Bresnian. Yeah. If you says you are him, if you saw me swear or sign this sincerely affirm as the case may be, that the evidence you should get concerned in this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So if you got her upon penalty of perjury, I do. May you please state your first and last name for the record? It's Craig Bresniak. May you please speak B R E Z N I A K. May you please state your badge number and business address for the record? 492 1111 Country Club Road, Middletown. Thank you, sir. Have a seat, sir. And pull up to the microphone so we can hear you. Thank you. Mayor, may I inquire? Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please tell us who you work for. I work for the Connecticut State Police. And for how long have you worked for the Connecticut State Police? Since 2008. All right. And uh, give the jury a little description as to uh, what you do for the Connecticut State Police. And to say it differently, what since 2008 have you done uh, with the state police? So I started on patrol at Troop K, worked there. Uh, and then I went to become an instructor at the training academy uh, in Meriden, where I ran the uh, physical fitness program and also was an adjunct firearms instructor. And then from there, I became a member of the state police tactical unit, which is where I've been since uh, up until present time. Are you still part of any work through any particular troop? No, I work through emergency services unit. Okay. Now, um, Please tell the jury about your current position and what you do for the Connecticut State Police. Yep. So my current position is the tactical coordinator. So I work in conjunction with the commander of emergency services uh, to direct and oversee tactical operations. Uh, I also work jointly with the team leaders um, and also overseeing directing training for the tactical team. Now, what is the tactical team and how is it different from say being a regular trooper. Yep. So the tactical team is a unit within the state police that people have to apply to and go through a selection process to be part of. Uh, that group of what we call operators is comprised of uh, people with different specialized training. We respond to high risk incidents in the state of Connecticut. Uh, we respond to barricaded suspect incidents, high risk warrant services, train for hostage rescue situations, uh, maritime operations on the Long Island Sound. Um, and we're also our work with our New England state police partners, and if needed, we can uh, go to those other, other New England states to uh, back up those state police agencies as well. 
How long have you been uh, associated with uh, the tactical team? Nine years. And during that nine years, what have your responsibilities been? So I was originally the East team leader. Um, geographically, our team is split into two teams based upon geographical um, the, ge the geography of Connecticut. Uh, the East team covers east of the Connecticut River, West team covers west. Uh, and the East team leader, I directed operations on the eastern part of Connecticut and also supplemented operations for the western portion. Uh, I was also assigned the train coordinator. So every month we train. Um, Right now it's a minimum of, with all units, minimum of five days monthly. So I was directing and overseeing training for that, whether I was running direct training or coordinating with other outside entities to come in and provide training for us. Now you just referred to a training coordinator. For how long have you been the training coordinator? So I don't that, object. I, mean, I don't see what any of this has to do with this case. I mean, his, his well, responsibilities. I think, uh, I think each of you, I'm gonna allow it. He's just going through the guy's background. All right. For how long have you been training coordinator? Since 2015. Do you know Trooper Brian North? I do. Uh, do you see him in the courtroom? I do. And how do you know Brian North? Initially, when I was an instructor at the training academy, he came through as a recruit, and then he applied to the tactical unit in 2019. Um, and I was part of the selection process and train up of new operators to the tactical team. Now, uh, did you train Brian North? I did. When did that training begin, if you can recall? Yeah, so that first training was in 2019, uh, November. Now, can you describe to the jury the type of training that Trooper North was trained in? Absolutely. So initially we start, the uh, any, any new operators that come onto the team, we have an administrative days where we bring them in, we go over our unit uh, SOPs, standard operating procedures. Uh, we also do a gear issue. So we have different gear that's issued out than the regular troopers within Connecticut. Uh, we size them, fit them for that gear, um, issue them firearms as well, and all the other gear that they would carry with them. The way we are arranged is they carry all that equipment or ultimately will carry that equipment in their vehicles around the state for deployment. Um, after those two days, we spent uh, two days on the range where there was a initial uh, train up on the firearms. So the platforms that we carry in the tactical team are different than regular patrol troopers. Um, so part of it is a familiarization and also basic proficiency skill assessment um, with the firearms and holsters that are assigned to them. Now, <clears throat> explain training regarding the use of a firearm. Related to the tactical team, correct. Yep. So initially, for them, as I said, because it's it's a new platform, uh, we'll begin with just just baseline fundamentals of drawing the weapon out of the holster um, and, and, and shooting a target, and then that has a progression through a uh, series of drills, series of rounds. Uh, it's also done in different times of the day to include daytime and nighttime, so we have different lighting conditions as well. Um, and and then ultimately that will lead to qualifications, which they do have to past qualifications, but with department qualifications and a higher standard qualification that we have in the tactical team. So uh, once they are able to pass those qualifications, they are then issued those firearms and can carry those. As part of the training, uh, is there training in the area of the speed in which a gun is fired? There, there is, we, we do talk about speed in which a gun is fired. Um, initially, we're, we're working on proficiency and then we do build up across a broad range of, uh, of time and rounds, uh, understanding that there, there's no set time or set round count that will ever be fired. <clears throat> Excuse me, and this, this training that you've spoken about, Trooper North uh, underwent this training, correct? That's correct. Uh, further, in regards to the training, was there any training with respect to intermediate uh, targets? So we, we've trained extensively as a team as to intermediate targets, also extensively with courses specifically to uh, vehicles um, and specific to that shooting in and around vehicles. Um, and have fired to the degree of hundreds if not thousands of rounds through uh, different window panes on vehicles, door panels. Um, and then the at, the at the basic recruit level, they are also exposed to this training as well. So intermediate barriers when they're going through their basic train up as a recruit to the state police and the training academy. 
<clears throat> and you use the term intermediate barrier. Can you explain that? Yeah, so through uh, extensive training experience, again, the courses we've been to, uh, our own experience of get, getting vehicles from salvage yards and so forth and experiencing the effects of these rounds, inter intermediate barrier is something that uh, uh, a round would have to go through that most likely will have an effect on the trajectory of that round. Uh, so for an example of that would be a window pane, a door panel. Um, if we're speaking specifically in houses, we're talking walls, doors, um, and understanding how those intermediate barriers affect those rounds. <clears throat> and, and is there an effect? There is an effect, yes. I, I would equate it to if, if, if you and I were throwing a baseball back and forth and we had a pane of glass between us uh, and you had a catcher's mitt up and I was trying to throw that baseball to you, the likelihood that that ball would go directly towards that catcher's mitt is very, very unlikely. Um, at which case, I'd probably throw a couple balls to create a large hole and then get that accurate throw to you. So what we know through extensive training and experience is depending upon the different we call rake of the window, which is also the angle of the window, uh, that will have an impact as to where the round goes. Um, it also is adversely affected whether you're shooting from the outside of the vehicle in or you're shooting from the inside of the vehicle out. Um, and to understand that, we've trained extensively um, and have also looked at the data and information relative to those experiences. So we have operationally put ourselves in those environments, um, put targets up and see what those effects actually look like, the deviation. So it does have an effect on the trajectory of the round. And finally, sir, is there training relative to the number of shots fired? So we don't prescribe a number of shots fired for anybody. With certain drills, drills have a specific intent for that drill. So in other words, we're trying to train a component skill related to using a firearm. Uh, some drills might be low round count where we are just looking to draw the firearm out of the holster. Uh, other drills might have higher round counts where we're assessing the shooter's ability to actually maintain positive grip and control of the firearm. So we shoot a wide array of uh, round counts through those firearms, both rifle and pistol. Can I have one moment, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, I have no further questions. Thank you very much. Press examination, Mr. Devlin? Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, so, um, you were not present on January 15, 2020, on Campbell Avenue, West Haven, were you? I was not. And so, you have no personal knowledge of what happened there, uh, in Barton State Police or West Haven Police and uh, Mr. Mubarak uh, Suleiman, correct? At, at being at that specific location, I, I'm aware of the incident. Right, but you have no personal knowledge as to what happened. Can you explain personal knowledge? What you saw with your own eyes, with your, with your own ears, uh, what you actually experienced yourself at that location. So I was not physically at that location. Any information that I have was from not being physically at that location. Okay. And you indicated that in connection with uh, the training for the tactical unit, um, that um, you have um, one round drills that you do? There are some, and generally those those drills work on. So That's a yes or no answer, sir. Do you have one round drills? There are one round drills. Okay. And two round drills? Two round drills. And you indicated that when firing a round through uh, a barrier like glass, uh, it affects the trajectory of the round. Is that right? Yes. And in an unpredictable way? To the degree that we were able to capture in certain examples, there's a predictable way. So in other words, if I'm shooting a windshield directly straight on, I know predictably where that round's gonna go. I know that that round's gonna go at a downward angle. Um, and because there's so many different angles that you could shoot at a window and on a car, to say that every angle that you're shooting from is predictable is unreasonable. To the degree that we are able to train on certain angles, there's a level of predictability based upon the rate of that window. But there's also a factor of unpredictability as well, correct? There is, correct. And with respect to your, your tactical training, there's no different training in terms of state police ability to use force, is there? No, but I would say we'd have a better understanding of the use of force based upon the examination of use of force policies more in depth than we do as a tactical team. Okay. All right. Thank you. No further questions. Briefly, Your Honor. 
Uh, Trooper First Class Bresniak, uh, during cross, you just asked about one and two round drills. Can you explain what that means? Absolutely. So th there's a few reasons we do drills like that. One is we obviously have a budget in the state police. Um, so in order to get specific components that we're looking for with specific drills, we will shorten that round count. So in other words, an example might be if we are just trying to train a new operator on how to draw their firearm out of their holster proficiently and get a round on target, we might do that with just one round because the, the point of that drill at the time is not for a long round count. It's, it's drawing that firearm out of the holster to the degree that we ultimately want to build it within their subconscious so that they can think clearly what other stuff is going on. But yes, there are uh, one, two round drills with the specific intent um, uh, building mechanics. And are there drills of higher numbers of bullets fired? There are. How high does that go? Do you want me to speak specifically towards Trooper North training or specific just in the training that you provided Trooper North? Yes. Yeah, so Trooper North was put through drills where there were round counts up to 10 rounds fired in a single string, uh, a single string of fire. And this is training that was part of the tactical training provided to Trooper North. That's correct. All right. Thank you, sir. No further questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're excused. So, yep. Mr. Riccio. Your Honor, the final two witnesses that the defense is going to be calling are witnesses that are coming from uh, a long distance. Uh, we made our best efforts to try to get those witnesses here today, but given travel and things like that, uh, they're not available until tomorrow. Uh, we tried our best, but unfortunately, they're arriving later today. They'll be ready to go uh, at the crack of 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So with that being said, those are our final two witnesses. Uh, we have no other witnesses to provide and no other evidence to present today. All right, then it would seem that um, we've concluded the business we have uh, for the jury today. So we're having a very short day. Correct. Correct. Okay. Do um, you have any comment, sir? Uh, no comment. Okay. Um, well, it does appear that we've run out of witnesses for today. So um, I'm going to be excusing you now uh, until tomorrow. Um, and we'll start uh, like we normally do here at 9. Come, it'll be brought into court around 10. And um, the state will have, I mean, excuse me, the defense will have two witnesses for you uh, tomorrow. Um, just so that you have an idea, uh, it does, well, you know, those, that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. Um, so um, tonight, uh, please, once again, as always, don't make up your mind before any opinions about what you have heard evidence-wise so far in the case. Uh, do not discuss uh, what you've heard and seen here with anyone at all, including among yourselves. Uh, do not seek out any information from other sources than what we have here uh, in the courtroom. Don't do any independent investigation or examination. Don't answer any press inquiries. Uh, do not watch uh, or listen to uh, any coverage of these matters or that are about the original incident. Um, and uh, I'll see you and we will see you in the morning. All right.